can see. It was padlocked, and I don't, I don't have the key to it. That's chilly. That's chilly. I'm Greg, and this is Malachi. Hello. Welcome to our home, Malachi. Thank you. Um, I mentioned uh, Malachi to you guys just a few days ago because he's had a very exciting week. Not a good week, but uh, but now it's going to get better, right? Yeah. It's all up from here. <laughs> it's <laughs> nothing but up from here. So I, I experienced a house fire, and it was it was really terrible, and and uh, you know really a really traumatic experience for me. And um, after uh, it was over and the investigations were over and everything had kind of settled down, uh, I, I went to my sister's house and I, I wanted to do something normal. I wanted to do something that made me feel like that there was something still normal about my life even though I had lost everything. So I sat at the computer and I went on Facebook and I posted uh, a, a status update that said, you know, I hope I never have to post anything else like this, but I just lost everything that I own in a house fire. And um, I didn't say anything, I didn't ask anyone for help, and uh, my friends just all came together when I was on the ground. You know, I couldn't pick myself up, and they came together and, um, you know, just rallied around me and helped pick me up. And Greg posted a video, and, you know, overnight, people from across the world, I mean, people that I could never imagine meeting, just sent messages and told me that they cared for me and said that they were willing to help and it was I can't I cannot stress how incredible that was for me just knowing that that people cared and people were worried and concerned and people were you know just uh, a guy said he'd, he'd give up his coffee for the day you know if it meant helping me and, and and someone else gave a dollar he said he was only 17 he didn't have a lot of money but he sent me a dollar someone else emptied out their bank account you know it was he said he had five dollars left and he gave it and i'm reading these things and i am just just for an hour and tears are flowing down my face because people that hadn't met me cared for me and and i've cared for people before in my life but I, I've never seen such an outpouring of kindness and it's just, it was just incredibly touching to know that there were people on this earth <laughs> that, that have no idea who I am, they've never met me, but you know, because they're friends with Craig and because they know he's a good guy and because they just wanted to help and they just had kind hearts, um, they helped me and uh, that's something that's changed my life forever. If you were a part of that, if you sent me a message, if if you helped me in any way, then you've you've been a part of changing my life and um, I'm, I'm starting over and, and, and it's rough but I have my life and there's nothing really more that I can ask for so um, from the bottom of my heart thank thanks to everyone um, for making this a lot less difficult than it, than it could have been. You want to tell us a story? Uh, yeah um, it was about roughly 5.30 a.m. and I was sleeping on this far wall, so that would be the the north wall of my couch. I usually sleep on my bed, which would have been right against this back wall here. Um, and I, I fell asleep on the couch, and I woke up, and the first thing I saw when I was sleeping, I looked above me, and there was just black smoke. Um, and then I looked forward, and just the whole back wall here, this entire back wall was on fire. Um, so I immediately jumped up, and as soon as I stood up, the smoke was about chest level, about to here. So I had to bend down and uh, crouch down just to get this front door open here. And I ran through the front door, which was right here. And uh, the first thing I did was make sure that my roommate could get out. So I was just in my socks and my shorts and t-shirt that I was wearing to sleep. So I ran this way. Um, right through here and I banged on this window for my roommate to get out um, I banged I, I heard him jump up and say what and I was like fire get out so I heard him run that way and uh, the next he was the, the first person who was you know closest to the fire so the next thing I did was run this way and uh, I ran here I banged on that door right there to wake them up as I was running past. And then I ran upstairs to the upstairs. I don't want to go up there because there's a lot of damage. Sure, no, we shouldn't yeah. go in there. Um, but I ran upstairs 
and banged on the tenant right above my house's door and, uh, to get her out and wake her up. Um, and I was banging on the other door, trying to actually bang with one hand and then kick back with my foot so I could knock at both places at the same time as, and get them out as quickly as I could. And everybody got out safely. My roommate barely made it out. As he was coming out, the kitchen exploded behind him. Um, there was an explosion. His hair was singed. And, Jeez, I uh, guess the, the gas line, yeah, probably. Yeah, for, uh, in the kitchen. So, I mean, gosh, if, if I had been seconds later, you know, whatever woke me up, if it had been any later, um, the fire department said that if, that if I had breathed in any smoke, I would have passed out and just fallen on the floor. That's how a lot of people die, not from actually getting burned, but just from inhaling smoke and then passing out and not being able to get themselves away from the place. Yeah. So just so many things that factored into my safety and being able to get out and then, um, you know, just being able to get everyone out at the right times. So. Um, Jeez, man, you realize you saved some lives there that night. Yeah, I, you know, um, when I was, I was sitting on the steps and, and uh, someone told me, they said, wow, you lost everything. And I just put my hands, I motioned with my hands and I said, give me a pile of everything I had in there like this and just, you know, stack 50 piles of that around. And it's, I mean, it's, it still doesn't come close to being worth everyone's lives here. You know, the, the three people down here and the, you know, two upstairs and the girl that was across from me and my roommate. And, you know, I, I'd give, I'd give everything I've ever had in my life or ever will have to, to, to be able to have precious lives safe and, and uh, you know, because it's, you can't put a value on that, you know. It really, uh, it, it makes me understand that, that, you know, things don't have value and, and, and uh, you know, we can get things and we can get uh, things that make us happy and gadgets and toys and laptops and clothes, but you know, human kindness is something that, that's that's worth more than anything that I could ever have, and human generosity and human life is is something that you know can never be bought, and you can't put a price on that. So, um, and humor, um, because of you guys, I'm, I haven't I laugh every day, I tell jokes every day, and uh, I'm a very fun-loving person. And for uh, you know, three days after it happened, I hadn't spoken to anyone. I was just so in shock, and and because of you know people talking to me and kind of pulling me up out of that, you know, I've been starting to joke around again and, 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 and be myself again, and uh, it's, it's really, it's really nice. Um, I was walking around looking angry, and it's not, it's not good for me to walk around looking like I'm mad, because then people are afraid of me, and they cross the street, and I'm big and scary, so that's not good. It's, it's good for me to be smiling and, yeah. and uh, happy again, so. We should make a funny video while you're here. We should. Yeah, we should, should do something funny. I have an idea. Okay. Do you have any ideas, buddy? <clears throat> Good boy. <laughs> Good dog.